everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Project Accounting. So our topic for today is all about the adjusting process. For this episode, you will be able to understand the different types of adjustments prepared at the end of each accounting period, prepare the adjusting entries, compare the accrual and cash basis of accounting, and distinguish deferrals from accruals. After nothing ma prepare yung trial balance, ang next na step sa accounting cycle is yung compilation ng data for adjustments. So yung compiling ng adjusting data is the process ng paggather at pag-update ng balances of some accounts. Normally kasi hindi pa pwede makagawa ng financial statements kahit na may trial balance na tayo kasi meron pang mga transactions na hindi pa nare-record or meron mga accounts na need ng adjustments. So bago natin i-discuss yung mga adjusting entries, Balikan muna natin yung ilan sa mga concepts kung bakit kailangan na adjusting entries. First is yung time period assumption na kung saan yung mga financial statements ay divided into accounting periods sa pag-prepare na financial reports based sa needs ni users. Wala kasi sanang problema kung antay natin na mag-prepare na financial statements hanggang sa mag-end yung operations na business. Kaso, since hindi nga ganun at dahil madaming transactions na more than one period, for example, yung biniling equipment na business 10 years ago ay ginagamit pa rin sa business, hindi pwedeng i-expense agad-agad lahat ng cost. Kaya ang dapat gawin is i-allocate yung cost dun sa period of use. Next naman is yung accrual basis of accounting. Last time na-discuss natin na yung accrual basis of accounting requires that companies should record transactions in the period in which the events occur or yung revenue should be recognized kapag na-earn na regardless kung na-receive mo na yung bayad, tapos yung expense naman should be recognized when incurred regardless kung binayaran mo na. Yan ang kinaibahan sa cash basis of accounting, na kung saan yung revenue and expenses will be recognized when cash is received or cash is paid. Sa ngayon, cash basis is not the generally accepted kasi mali yung pag-recognize ng revenue at expenses. Yung last na accounting principle kung bakit kailangan ng adjusting entries is yung matching principle wherein yung nirecognize mong expense ay dapat imamatch mo sa revenue na na-generate. So kailan ba dapat nating i-recognize yung mga revenue at expenses based sa accrual basis of accounting? So dapat magre-recognize tayo ng revenue only when the performance obligation is satisfied. So kapag yung business nag-agree siya to perform a service or sell a product to a customer, meron siyang performance obligation at dapat mag-recognize lang ng revenue kapag nasatisfy mo na yung performance obligation. So for example, si Quickie Repair Shop is nag-render ng services noong May 31. Pero yung customers hindi pa nila binabayaran until the first week of June. So, so si Quickie Repair Shop should record revenue in May when it performed the service kung kailan nasatisfy yung performance obligation rather than in June when it received the cash. So sa pag-recognize naman na expenses, accountants usually follow the simple rule kung may revenue, dapat may expense. So yung expense, nakatay siya sa revenue recognition based dun sa matching principle. So for example, si Quickie Repair Shop kanina, dapat mag-report din siya ng salary expense incurred dun sa pag-perform ng services ng May 31, which is yung same period kung kailan ni-recognize yung service revenue. So alam na natin yung mga accounting concepts behind the adjusting entries. Take note na yung adjusting entries are required every time a company prepares financial statements. Every adjusting entry will include one income statement account and one balance sheet account. So usually, pini-prepare yung mga adjusting entries for the following items. So accrued expenses, accrued revenue, prepaid expenses, and earned or deferred revenue, depreciation of property, plant, and equipment, and collectible accounts or bad debts expense, at merchandise inventory. Yung unang dalawa yung tinatawag na accruals or yung mga expenses already incurred pero hindi pa nababayaran at yung mga revenue na na-earn na pero hindi pa nare-receive yung collection. Yung prepaid expenses at unearned revenue naman ay yung tinatawag na deferrals wherein heto yung mga expenses na paid in advance bago pa makonsume at mga cash na na-receive na bago pa man ma-perform yung services. So isa-isahin natin i-discuss paano mag-prepare ng mga adjusting entries hanggang bad debts expense kasi yung adjustments sa merchandise inventory, i-discuss natin siya sa accounting for merchandising business. So una natin i-discuss is yung accrued expenses o yung mga expenses already incurred but not yet paid. 
Ito ay isang liability account na tinatawag ding accrued liabilities or accrued payable. So bakit ba tayo magpre-prepare ng gantong adjusting entry? May mga expenses kasi na na-incur at the end of the period, pero mababayaran pa natin sa susunod na period. Ilan sa mga examples ng accrued expenses ay yung mga taxes payable, interest payable, utilities payable, salaries or wages payable, rent payable, at advertising payable. So bakit kailangan mag-adjust ng accrued expense? Kasi prior to adjustment, yung liabilities at expenses natin ay understated or kulang. Therefore, ang adjusting entry for accrued expenses results in an increase or a debit to an expense account and an increase or a credit to a liability account. So to illustrate yung adjusting entry sa ganito, magbigay tayo ng mga examples. So first example, on December 2020, David's Beauty Shop used a total of 3,000 pesos worth of electricity and water. The Beauty Shop received the bills on January 10, 2021. So when should the expense be recorded? On December 2020 or January 2021? So the answer is on December 2020. Kasi according to accrual basis of accounting, expenses are recognized when incurred regardless of when it is paid. So, the amount above pertains sa utilities used in December. Therefore, kung walang entry ang ginawa to record the utilities expense, then adjusting entry is necessary which is as follows. So, debit utilities expense 3,000 and credit utilities payable 3,000 to take up the accrued utilities as at December 31. In the adjusting entry, utilities expense is debited to recognize your expense kasi Kulang ang expense natin since hindi nag-record ng utility bill noong December. So, dapat magde-debit tayo ng utilities expense. And mag-credit tayo ng utilities payable kasi kulang ang payable natin since yung amount is yet to be paid sa January 2021 pa. So, next example naman. A company is paying a weekly salary of 50000 to its employees for a 5-day work week. Payday is every Friday. So, assuming the last payday is on March 26, 2021, Friday, then the last day of the month is March 31, falls on Wednesday, how much is the accrued salary as at March 31, 2021? So, based sa problem, since payday is every Friday, yung next na bayaran ng salaries is sa April 2, 2021, kasi yun ang next Friday after ng March 26. Therefore, as at March 31, Yung salaries pertaining sa March 29, Monday, March 30, Tuesday, at March 31, Wednesday is accrued kasi babayaran lang yon sa next payday, which is on April 2. So yung accrued salaries as at March 31 is 30,000, which is computed as follows. So total weekly salary na 50,000 divided by the number of working days in a week which is 5 since Monday to Friday. So, yung 10,000 is yung average salary per day. Tapos, ita times natin sa accrued number of days, which is yung Monday to Wednesday, so 3 days yon. So, yung accrued salaries as at March 31 is 30,000. So, yung adjusting entry na dapat i-prepare to take up yung accrued salaries at March 31 is debit salaries expense 30,000 and credit salaries payable 30,000. So, next naman is yung interest payable. So, on October 1, 2021, a company issued a 60-day 10% notes payable for 75000 Assume the company's accounting period ends on October 31. How much is the accrued interest as of October 31, 2021 using the 360 days? So, the answer in this problem is 625. So, sa amount ng interest na dapat i-record, Dapat alam natin yung three factors, which are yung face value ng note, then yung interest rate, and yung length of time the note is outstanding. Usually, sa pag-compute ng interest, we express yung time period as a fraction of a year. So dito, yung face value ng note is 75,000, then yung interest rate is yung 10%, then yung length ng time na outstanding yung note is 60 days. Kaso, since sinabi dito na yung accounting period ends on October 31, outstanding lang yung note ng 30 days, which is from October 1 to October 31. So, we follow yung rule na exclude the first day at include the last day rule sa pag-compute ng days outstanding. 
So, para ma-compute natin yung accrued interest, so face value, which is 75,000, times annual interest rate na 10%, times yung days outstanding in terms of 1 year, so 30 over 360 days. Minsan, ginagamit na 360 or 365 days depende sa problem. Since dito, in-specify na 360 days, so 360 days ang ginamit natin. So, ang amount na accrued interest as at October 31 is 625. So, ang adjusting entry natin as at October 31 is as follows. So, debit interest expense 625 and credit interest payable 625. Pumunta naman tayo sa isa pang accrual which is yung accrued revenue na isang asset account. Heto yung mga na-earn na pero hindi pa natin nare-receive yung mga bayad ni customers sa atin. So, bakit ba tayo magpe-prepare ng ganitong adjusting entry? Kasi, di ba, under accrual basis of accounting, dapat na tayo mag-recognize ng revenue once na satisfy na yung performance obligation kahit na hindi pa natin nare-receive yung cash sa customer. So, para tama yung may record nating revenue, kailangan natin mag-prepare ng adjusting entry for accrual revenue. Kasi, prior to adjustment, ang receivable at revenue natin ay understated or kulang. Kaya, ang adjusting entry for accrued revenue results in an increase or a debit to an asset account and an increase or credit to a revenue account. So, para ma-illustrate natin yung accrued revenue, magbigay tayo ng ilang examples. So, first example, El Pueblo leases its billing space to a tenant. The tenant agreed to pay monthly rental fees of 2000 On August 31, 2021, El Pueblo did not receive the rental fee for August yet and no record was made in the journal. What is the adjusting entry to be made? So based sa example, hindi pa daw nare-record yung rent revenue kasi hindi pa daw nare-receive yung rental fee. Pero di ba under the accrual basis of accounting, the rent income should be recognized kasi na-earn na kahit hindi pa nakokolekta. Since kulang ang asset natin at revenue, Dapat dagdagan natin pareho ang asset at revenue by debiting receivable at crediting revenue. So ang adjusting entry sa transaction na ito ay debit rent receivable 2000 and credit rent revenue 2000 to take up the accrued rent revenue as at August 31. So another example. On October 1, 2021, startup company received 6 month 10% promissory note from a customer in the amount of 100,000. What is the adjusting entry to be made on December 31, 2021, the end of company's calendar year? So, gaya kanina sa interest expense, dapat alamin natin yung three factors which is yung face value ng note, interest rate, at yung length of time the note is outstanding. So, yung face value ng note is 100,000, tapos yung interest rate is 10%. Then, yung interest income na dapat ma-receive natin in a year is 10,000. Pero since 3 months lang yung lumipas from October to December 31, 3 months lang din yung entitled si startup na interest. So we need to prorate yung 10,000 by dividing the 10,000 sa 12 months para makuha yung average interest per month times 3 months kasi yun lang yung entitled si startup. So ang accrued interest from October 1 to December 31, 2021 is 2,500. So ang adjusting entry natin, I debit interest receivable 2500 and credit interest revenue 2500. Please watch the next video for the part 2 ng discussion natin ng mga adjusting entries. Thank you.